Oh, three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show here at an undisclosed location, Magic Lounge in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I've got a new friend and we've got some commonalities. Her name is Shannon and the name is Procise, but I think it's Precise. <laughs> Shannon, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to connect with you like this. You're over on the other side. You're over East Coast area, aren't you? I'm in Satellite Beach, Florida, about 20 minutes south of Cocoa Beach. I'm I learned from somebody in Florida doing one of these interviews that Florida has a central time zone portion on it. It does. Yep. Up in the, up by Tallahassee yeah. area. I yep. never would have thought. I thought it was way over there in the east. How long have you lived in Florida? Oh my gosh. 22 years. Oh, so deep roots. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you know the area. Where is that area? Is that... So we are, um, I am, I'm sorry, east of Orlando about an hour of Orlando and then the Space Center, which is on the East Coast, uh, it takes about, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes to get to the, the, the Space Center. Cocoa Beach. There. I haven't been to Cocoa Beach, but that's where Jeannie's from. <laughs> yes, I know. And the Doors. Jim Morrison was born in, in this area. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> we, have some, we have some history up here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, too, with some musicians, you know, Prince and... Uh, Who's that, uh, who's that guy, uh, what's his name? I can't remember the guy's name, but that's his voice. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, it'll come to me one of these days. So let's talk a little about you. We kind of did. You married, got kids and all that kind of stuff for you. Wild and crazy. Um, I, I do have kids. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not married, but I am, I am with a wonderful man. Um, I have three kids. I've got a 21 year old, a 22 year old and a seven year old. So I, I had a, you know, a big, a big gap and, and a chance to, to do a repeat. You got the spectrum. <laughs> you know, I was going through some of your stuff and I found it very interesting when I first got uh, the information about you. And then I looked at it more and you got this book called Media Magic. And I, I know, know when I saw that, it's like we have something in common. Yes, magic is interesting. I've been doing it all my life. So my, I tell my wife all the time, my brain developed differently because I see things sort of behind the scenes. Yeah. as opposed to what they actually are and like when we go to an event i don't really look at the event i'm more looking at the rigging and how do they load that in and <laughs> yes <laughs> well, yes. and i have to say the the musician uh, magicians that i know um have this wonderful sense of humor they tend to bring a lot of joy and life to wherever they go so i think it's your wife's probably very lucky to be with you because i, I imagine if you have that same energy of, of making fun. making it fun. You got to. Even in the situation we are now with this citrus COVID thing and all that craziness and stuff, you got to have a good happy attitude. Otherwise, they go crazy. <laughs> like I, I was in the events business and COVID kind of shut everything down for me. So I could be, a, well, you know, be the victim and stuff, but I'd rather be the victor. Yes, yes, um, yes. Did you apply for any grants? Do you guys have grants in your area? Um, there was some stuff, but I really don't do that. I just suck it up and make it happen. Do you? Oh my gosh. They gave, a, we brought, we got $5 million in our area. And so I was calling all my friends and we were able to get just people I know over 200,000 out as free money and they just did it again. So I'm telling everybody, if you haven't looked into grants, look into grants because they are. It should be. There's a lot of people. I mean, back, um, I'm speaking more about the event industry, but a lot of people don't realize that, oh, the event industry. Okay, you can't do your parties. What that affects is like the venue that I do my expo at, they had to close down. That means all the event planners that did events there, a lot of them, a lot of weddings don't have jobs. And the event planner is responsible for the caterer, the florist, the balloon decorator, the photographer, the videographer, the chairs, the tables, the tents. It goes on and on. And all those people lost their jobs. Yeah. And yeah. there's no jobs to be so you got to do something so they can eat so that when it goes, goes again they can get going but let's yeah. talk more about you rather than the situation <laughs> you're you're more in the uh like publicity realm of things are you yeah so i um i've also produced over 400 events and and i 
in that process, I learned how to really, um, what we call getting butts in seats. And so I uh, had to learn how to leverage the power of publicity and free publicity uh, to grow it. So I, I used to do a, a health conference in my area and we kept getting 500 people real easy. And then, and then I just dove in and started studying, like how are people getting articles and getting TV and getting radio and and finally cracked the code and went from 500 to 2000 attendees um, off of one press release that we got you know many different places to to pick it up and and with this press release format what's great is that they will most of the time do interviews so the interviews are a lot more powerful than just you know where they cut and paste from the paper I mean it's still great any any publicity is good publicity uh, but then I realized uh, we you know, a lot of the businesses that we would have at the conferences, they were good at what they were doing, but they weren't good at marketing. And so I just started teaching this and, and sharing it and, and, um, and at the events would help the people. I'd actually provide them with the press release, which was good for me. This might be a little tool for you when we get back going again, but I would give them the press release and I would do training on teaching them how to, how to leverage the event to be an industry expert and, and grow. And, and it was wonderful. You know, once I started training people, I'd go online and Google it and I'd have all these people helping me get marketing and, and help their business grow. That's how I do it. I have all my exhibitors write a press release and submit press releases. And that way, all that synergistic energy focuses on that one. And a shout out for people like you, for the people that are listening, is someone like yourself has blazed the trail and kind of been there and done that. And you know these little tricks. I've learned a few on the, the way I'm no expert at all. But I understood that sometimes you should go for the publicity on those those weird holidays like Columbus Day and stuff like that. Yes. Because <laughs> they're sort of holidays and nobody's doing anything. And that's yep. when you can kind of slip in there. Yeah. Get stuff going. Yeah, like and that. I've had I've had good luck with remnant space. I I, I mean the one thing I remember um, one time I kept getting turned down and I tried to change the article and you know the 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 tagline and and I knew it was something that the media wanted. I knew it was perfect and and the, the publisher actually called me and I, it was right when I gave up. I said, okay, it's went to print. Like I, I don't give up until it goes to print. And then like an hour later, she called me and she said, we have a full page remnant and we'd like to feature you. And I was just like, yes, this is. The one. <laughs> and that's, a, that's important too about the relationships that you build as you're doing that relationships with the media and doing like media parties and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. because you know, when someone's got a favor to give, they want to give it to the people they like, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you still have to create a good story, but what I found, yeah. Brad, and you probably know this, is that everybody has either education, you know, community give back, um, or um, human interest stories. And that's kind of the focus that I take, because as you know, there's a lot of negative news out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it, the those angles, it's, it seems to be fairly easy for any business. I haven't met anybody where I couldn't sit down with them and go, okay, here's a story, here's a story, here's a story. I had a friend that uh, he still runs the National Mail Order Association and from his press releases, the way he'd do stuff sometimes, instead of mailing it to the, to the company, he had a guy in, in a gorilla suit go and deliver it in a tube just to make an impact. <laughs> Anything to be different, you know? Yeah, my friend is um, somebody in our network talks a lot about uh, a wow package. Now that would be a wow package. He said, yeah. you've got to figure out either a wow box or some way of wowing people. And that would definitely be a wow. So how long have you been doing the PR thing, the media? So I have been, um, Oh, gosh, over 20 years. My, I used to do firewalk events. And so that was kind of my first dip into learning how to market and publicize and, and partner, which, events. what's that? Firewalk events. Yes. Like Tony Robbins? No, well, like Tony Robbins, but these were more, you know, Tony Robbins um, is, is really, how do I say this? Um, kind of breakthrough stuff. This is breakthrough, uh, but we never did 40 foot. <laughs> they, were, they were maybe eight to 12 feet long. And, um, and I, I would fly in different instructors. I've worked with four or five different instructors over the years. And, and it was, um, I just love, I love creating that environment of breakthrough. So it was wonderful to get media. I was able to get, even get media out to the events and, um, oh, cool. 
and it was it was a lot of fun. So yeah, it seems like we got a lot of commonalities because you mentioned health events. I used to produce health and wellness expos too. Really? Yeah, this is a the um, natural health and wellness expos, what we called ours too. <laughs> ours was the Healthy Life Expo, and then earlier on it was the Midwest Health and Wellness Expo. Then we did the Women's Health and Wellness Expo, and oh, we did the Healthy Life oh. Expo. It was all that holistic health and stuff. Yeah. I remember when I first did it. You're familiar with the Whole Life Expos? I know Paul. Yes. Yeah. When when I first did this, it wasn't Paul. It was um, the guy that bought it. No, the guy that started it. He was out in California. What the heck is his name? What's Paul's last name? Um, I have to look at my phone. And he owns the whole life. Well, he owned the whole life magazine. And then, uh, then he started a, a solar thing. I think, I think it's the same company. It's different owners, but Andrews. No, yeah, it must be different people. I, it's on the tip of my tongue kind of thing, but uh, I had, I was going to do this big event and I had compiled a whole bunch of information and some guy gave me a call, this guy, and I can't remember his name right now. And he said, I think we have a problem. We've got a similar event on the same day. And I looked up what they did and they've been doing it for like 14 years. And I thought, you know what? Here's my box of leads, make it so. I just threw in the towel. I wasn't, wasn't gonna compete with that. That was when they had all the, the monks, the chanting monks coming in and they did a great job of PR and stuff. They had all that stuff happening and it was, it was a big ta-da here in Minneapolis. Yeah, and they sold it just before um... 9-11, well, and maybe it's a different different person, but I know Paul, um, I had brought him on as, a, as an advisor for a little bit, and, and he um, said he sold it just before 9-11, and just like COVID, he said 9-11, people just didn't want to travel, so the, the new owner really struggled to, to, you know, get it going. It was a, it was a pretty... Well, there are those things that happen in this event world and uh, we're experiencing it now, but even so, the back to you, <laughs> that's why we're doing this, is the, the publicity thing. It's important nowadays, especially with the people doing these virtual events, you still yeah. need to let people know. And I, I just had a conversation with uh, someone earlier about the bandwidth that we have is only 24 hours in a day. Yes. And because of this COVID thing, everybody's doing these Zoom things and these webinars. And so that- It's a lot time, of noise. Yeah. yeah, a lot. So how can you get yours noticed so that people will, because they, they, it's all priorities now. There's Zoom events all over the place. How are you going to get noticed with yours? So you got to do that press release where someone says, I'm going to that, that virtual event. Yeah, yeah, you got to get out in those in those ways. And also, one of the things, even if people aren't doing events, like right now, I'm um, really nudging people to work on their ex, what I call their expert power bio. Um, this is something that I that I found over the years that people have a really hard time talking about themselves. Oh yeah, and and yet they're they're everybody I've connected with have this background, have either this passion for what they're doing. And uh, the bio for, for me was a big pivot to being able to make more money, um, get bigger clients and get more yeses. And, and at first, you know, I didn't, um, I didn't really understand the power. I wasn't using it. And then I was like, man, I'm going to send these out with all my proposals. I'm going to send this out before I meet with people. I'm going to, I'm going to use this all the time, but I'm also going to ask the person for theirs too. Right. So there's, there's an exchange, but it was a lot nicer because I didn't want to talk about myself. I didn't, you know, but it, but I, once I did this, um, was able to get some pretty nice five figure contracts and, and, and I, you know, right now why people are at home or on lockdown or, or doing this, this pivot, um, that expert power bio is a great way to first off, look at all, all of your accomplishments and, and kind of shift it with, with whatever direction you're going. It makes a lot of sense too, to have someone like you do that for someone like me because the person's going to go like here's a, an example i did a magic presentation for norwest bank up here and the spokesperson for norwest at that time was um uh, bob newhart oh my goodness <laughs> so he was at the event and i was talking with him and i was joking around he thought it was funny he says hey can i use that on the stage and i go sure go ahead so he used my joke on the stage 
So I put that into my little bio as like written for Bob Newhart because I kind of did, right? Beautiful. <laughs> and did you share the stage with him at the same event? Did you do something? And he I didn't did do it. I was I was doing walk around at the event. Okay. Okay. Was okay. On the stage, so I wasn't okay. on the stage. Okay. Okay. I was I gonna say, oh my. Well, just what you've said so far, I imagine your bio would be a lot of fun and pretty powerful. Just just the people that you've worked with with your events and, and who you've helped and who I've you've partnered with. I've vanished hand, uh, coins in the hands of Dr. Ruth. And... <gasps> oh my goodness. <laughs> I've done some stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, well I, I remember I... that guy's name, Alan Vandycamp. Alan Vandycamp. Alan Van Van Vandycamp. He yeah. was the guy that um, was working with this other guy with the whole life expos. And then uh, th this was back in the 80s, I think. 80s, yeah, they were, yeah, it was a... And uh, then he started doing these green expos when all the recycle stuff came into play. Anyways, that, that popped into my head. I knew Good, that. I'm glad you said it would. You said it'll come back to me when I... <laughs> It does. When it does, yeah. yeah. So I actually, I actually um, created a twelve-step power bio system where you know I give it away for free. I just ask people key questions. Um, I share with them some power words so that they're able to kind of trigger things on on what they what they might have done, and and it's it's a lot of fun to have people go through that process because uh, um, it does two things. One is it you know, it helps showcase who you are and what you've done. But the other thing is sometimes people might not be feeling so confident or certain, or they, they just may be feeling depressed and, and to go through that process and see what they've accomplished or who they've impacted or who they've played with, you know, so, so what I say with Bob Newhart, um, it, it can be uplifting to see, wow, I've actually accomplished um, some great things. And then also for people that are really young. So I, I've worked with a lot of, because I have younger kids, you know, younger, they don't want to be called kids. Um, <laughs> they, they might be starting a new adventure and they may not, they may not have the experience. And so in this process, there's ways by association. And, and again, everything has to be true and valid, but there's ways by association to help these young adults really find their mark in the world um, by creating a power bio. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to, yeah, it's, to it's help helpful. people get out. You can almost act as a coach, I think, to draw that information by asking the right questions because mm -hmm. most people will take it and play things down. Mm -hmm. Yes. They're embarrassed. Yep. Or, and then you just can pull that out and highlight it. And that's what might get that thing to be public. Yeah. Well, another thing just came in. This is off topic, but that musician I was talking about is Bob Dylan. He's from Minnesota. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> oh my gosh, your bio would be so much fun. That's the other thing is I tell people. I never, I never met him, but he's from here. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, got it, okay, got it. That's no, a big name. Don't get ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> but I have met Dr. Ruth. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, just think about the corporations and stuff that you've played with. So. There's a lot of corporate here in Minneapolis, more than people realize. You know, like I said, uh, 3M, General Mills, Pillsbury, Honeywell, uh, Medtronic, um, um, Mayo Clinic is here. So we, Cargill Corporation. There's a lot of, a lot of corporate here. 3M, you know? Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> There's some big companies here. And that's why I did my magic thing in that realm. It was much easier because I didn't want to travel all over the place and or get on cruise ships or anything. I pretty stayed home and did corporate events. Beautiful. Cool. So I like to kind of keep these kind of short and put to the point so people can uh, digest them. And then if they want, they can get a hold of you. Now, do you have something that you can offer people that they can kind of dip their toe in the water and kind of? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So I have a couple of things. If you go to um, uh, my website, the shannonprocise.com, I do have uh, the expert power bio system. So you can you can download that for free, the, the 12 questions, or you can feel free to email me at info at shannonprocise.com. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I should give you meet let me just give you one website. I, for, I, I often forget I have this great tool. If you go to meetshannon.com, um, you can download this book for free, the Media Magic Book. Uh, you can also find some other gifts and, and there you can connect with, you know, my text is there, my appointment schedulers is there, uh, anything that, that, that you would want to know to get to learn more. So there's a lot of good things. So it's meetshannon.com, which is easy yep. to remember, M-E-E-T, Shannon. 
S H O N N O M. S H A N N O M. Yep. And then the last name is Procise, kind of like Precise, but with yep. no Procise. Yes. <laughs> My last name is Goodham, and nobody knows how to spell it if they say it, and they don't know how to say it if they spell it. So how I is it spelled? It. G U D I M. Okay. Okay. So it's Norwegian, like Guidium. Guidium. Oh. Guidium. <laughs> Well, Shannon, this has been a lot of fun. Hopefully we could do some others and who knows, we might cross paths someday. You know yeah, I can't wait till you get your events going again. I know a lot of event planners. I don't know if people travel in, but I'd love to make some introductions and thanks for what you do to bring joy into people's lives with magic. You have to, you have to. Yeah. You've got to be happy. So if you want to stick around, we'll have a chat. Other than that, I'm going to sign this off and bean it up to the universe so that people can find it and put those little hashtags and keywords. <laughs> And oh, that was something I was going to ask you too. When you do your writing, we're still on here. Yes. <laughs> do you implement stuff like keywords and all that kind of stuff because of the search engines and all that when you're? Yeah. So um, I work with a PR distribution. And so we do look at keywords, we okay. do look at hashtags. Um, we're not able to put those in some of the press releases this obviously uh but the big suggestion that i have for people that makes them stand out from from the rest is anytime they can bring in numbers mm -hmm. so three strategies nine tools are the one press release that i mentioned to you where the event went to 2000 um, the title was 85 ways to improve your health in six hours or less so we mm -hmm. had 85 booths it was a six hour show and that tagline oh, cool. was just <laughs> huge very cool well, I had that thought was in my head and I knew it was important with the way the internet is these days. So I had to get that one out. Yeah, anyway, no, I'm glad. Jan and I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you very much and uh, be well, be safe, be kind. Thank you. Thank you so much. Peace.